Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing wonderfully well. For today's valued viewer request, we've got from Brockwell Lane. I love that name. Hey Cap, ever heard of Constant Peg, the Red Eagle Squadron of the UAS Flying Captured MiGs? I'd love to hear you guys' take about this video, The Secret Squadron. Okay, thank you for that question. I, you know what, I've been waiting for someone to ask this question for about a year now. Here's the video and we'll go and look at it, but probably at the end, because we really need to set the scene if we're going to understand what the Red Eagles was. The Red Eagles was a squadron, the 4477th USAF squadron, which was designed for testing captured MiGs. And that sounds crazy, but it's as awesome as it sounds. Let's scroll right back and let's look at the history. We start in 1953, Operation Moolah by bribing a North Korean pilot in a MiG-15 to defect to the South. He did it, he got the money, he brought his MiG over and the Americans acquired the MiG-15 that way for operational purposes, testing to find its weaknesses. We've got a full video of that and I will link that in the description so you can see that if you want. 1967, a MiG-21 was acquired from Israel. Now, how Israel got it, it was an Iraqi pilot who brought the MiG-21 to Israel and the Israel sold it then or gave it to America. And we've got a full video on that if you want to go and see that. Next, in 1968, the USAF acquired a MiG-17 from Israel and that was Operation Have Drill. Syrian Air Force mistakenly landed in Israel. However you do that, I don't know, but that's what happened. And as we show here, there were several other HAV programs in the 60s and 70s and up to 1980, I believe it was. You can see Drill there, you can see Donut there. We've got Boxer, we had a MiG-23, another MiG-21 there, Shenyang J6 there. We had an East German MiG-29 there. These are ones that need looking at, we need to do videos for them. Pad, MiG-23, Privilege, Shenyang F5, Egyptian SU-20 and so on. These HAV programs are labelled under the operation of the Groom Lake program. Then later came Constant Peg. And in fact, there's more steps between Groom Lake and Constant Peg. We've got, for instance, in May 1973, Project Have Idea was formed, which took over from the older HAV programs, Donut and Drill, and transferred them to Area 51 at the NTTR with the intent of having them tested. Then 4477 Squadron, known as Constant Peg, the Red Eagles were formed in 1977, disbanded in 1990. This was the proper organised testing of the fruits of the HAV program. So we acquired big 21s, 17s, 15s, 23s, 29s, F5s and so on. And this was organised under Constant Pegs. From 1977 through to 1988, the program known as Constant Pegs saw USAF, Navy and Marine air crews flying against Soviet-designed MiG fighters as part of a training program where American pilots could better learn how to defeat or evade the communist bloc fighters of the day. And from that, information which is all, as far as I know, declassified now, and I've got it here sitting on my hard drive, literally, are the results of those tests, which are really fascinating. Before we leave the screen, just to say that there was also, as you would imagine, the opposite side, as well as the USAF stealing Soviet equipment and Chinese equipment. I say steal, you know what I'm trying to say, acquired. The Soviets acquired USAF and other NATO aeroplanes, Mirages, all sorts of stuff. And they did their own version of Constant Peg, and we'll have a look at that in a bit. So that's the organisation, that's the history of what happened in these nearly four decades. I'm going to give you two GR presentations and then we'll go and watch the video. First, the American MiG story. The primary adversaries of American fighters over Vietnam were agile Soviet jets like MiG-17 and MiG-21. The Americans were forced to fight them using not-so-agile F-4 Phantoms, amongst other planes. Thus, they had to find a way to expose the weakness of the MiGs and use it against them to shoot them down. MiGs were pretty successful on the international market and the Americans knew that their next adversary would surely have MiGs in its service. Combat engagements were too short for analysing the jets properly and thus Americans were looking to get an airworthy jet from somewhere for extended exploitation. A ray of hope appeared when an Iraqi pilot defected to Israel in his MiG-21 F-13, that's have donut. This jet was loaned to the Americans by the Israelis from Jan 1968 and was tested at the mystical Groom Lake in the US. The jet was tested under the Have Donut program and a detailed report of its capabilities and performance was made. Half Ferry and Half Drill were also started. These programs tested ex Syrian MiG 17Fs, which were loaned to the Americans just after the MiG 21 was. 
Then came the ambitious Red Eagles, uh, 1977 to the 4477 Test Squadron, a dedicated MiG squadron of the USAF. In this article, you will thus get to see the MiGs that entered service in the USAF. Here we have the MiG with the Israeli insignia with the test pilot Gary Shapira standing beside it. Here we have the former Iraqi MiG-21 received American colors while in the US and was extensively used to test its performance and capabilities. It was also used to train a select few from the USAF before being returned to Israel. This MiG was given the board number 007 James Bond in Israel and has been preserved along with several other captured aircraft. And the Hav Drill MiG-17, the Hav Ferry MiG-17 also received American insignia. That is so weird, doesn't it? 17 with an American sign. The American Air Force obtained invaluable data by exploiting these jets. USAF thus wanted a dedicated mid-squadron which would be used to train American pilots on a more routine basis. This marked the beginning of constant PEG program under the 4477 test squadron based at the Schnoper test range near Nellis. The program started with have donut, have ferry and have drill MiGs and was expanded later on. The expansion was done first using the MiGs from Indonesia and then from Egypt. The Americans also got their hands onto the MiG-23 and exploited them under the have pad have boxer programs they were then handed over to the 4477 red eagles for exploitation and we got floggers by the late 1980s the early migs were nearing the end of their service lives and hence 12 new built f7s were acquired from china in the same secretive fashion as other migs these jets allowed the squadron to expand and put up a larger number of sorties daily the canopies of the f7 are hinged at the rear end unlike those on the mig 21 which are hinged at the front in the pics above you can easily differentiate between the f7s and the mig 21s by looking at the canopy very few pilots sworn to secrecy were exposed to these jets few pilots from the squadron's village to nellis were selected and asked to fly towards a designated area where they would run into the migs they were allowed to practice different approaches on the MiGs, followed by mock dogfights. At times, several MiGs would be deployed to ambush a formation of USAF fighters to simulate combat. All this provided valuable experience to the pilots, which would be passed on to the squadron over time. This improved the chances of survivability in combat. MiG-17s were retired in the 80s due to their obsolescence, difficult maintenance and crashes. The MiG-23 suffered from reliability problems as well, which affected flights and caused crashes. However, these jets were excellent in some domain or other. The MiG-17 was excellent in slow turning fights, while the Flogger sported tremendous acceleration. The MiG-21, on the other hand, proved to be a gem of a fighter. It could turn hard and bleed a lot of energy. This caused the fighter pursuing it to overshoot, thus giving the fish better chance to shoot it down. Pilots flying the jet had to keep their hands ready on the flap levers while turning hard to avoid stall due to low speed. The program officially ended in July 1990 due to the end of the Cold War and the massive budget cuts that followed it. The fate of the jets is still classified, although some of them have been preserved in museums. Most of the details from the program have been declassified, and I've got a massive document showing the results, along with the pics posted above. You should read the book Red Eagles by Steve Davis. And on to the Soviet counterpart. It should be mentioned that the Soviet VVS had an opportunity to study a pair of F-14 Tomcats and extensively test them against current Soviet fighters. These tests were not conducted in the middle of the desert, but just outside of Moscow, at the Tukovsky Flight Test Center, then known to the American spooks as Ramanskoy Air Base because of the Ramanskoy Highway passing nearby. No photos or any other official information regarding these tests were ever released, although it is known that the Tomcats came from the only possible source, Iran. It is also known that one Russian organization consistently participated in the testing of foreign aircraft and their components, the Central Aero Hydrodynamic Institute, known by its Russian abbreviation TSAGI. Among the aircraft tested in this facility were two F-86 Sabres captured by the VVS in Korea and numerous other foreign aircraft obtained during various local conflicts. In particular, during the Korean and Vietnam Wars, as well as the reconnaissance aircraft shot down over or near the USSR. One F-5 was extensively tested by top Soviet pilots from Kalov's State Flight Test Center. In air combat with the MiG-21, F-5 did show extremely well, winning almost all fights according to the reports. This encouraged Soviet aircraft designers to push to develop new types like the MiG-23 and the MiG-29. Excellent pictures here, possible captured F-4 Phantom and Mirage jet somewhere in the Soviet Union. And here we have captured F-5 being tested. 
by the Soviet Union. So now we've learned from the early 50s all the way up to 1990 about the history behind the Red Eagles, why this happened and how it happened. Let's go and watch the requested video. The U.S. came into possession of, um, of some real Russian MiGs. Constant Peg was intended to train the U.S. Air Force how to fly and fight against a real Soviet aircraft. We uh, exploited them, found out how they worked and what all the engineering details were. I know how fast they'd go, how high they'd go, how tight they'd turn. I was in General Vandenberg's office one day trying to get him to sign one of these test plans. He says, we ought to just be training with these airplanes. Uh, maybe we can put the MiGs on our own airfield and we can train with them without all of this test plan business. So that's kind of the way it all got started. And I reminded him, uh, this is going to be our program. It ought to be on your call sign. Do you have a call sign, sir? He said, it's constant. I thought of my wife, Peggy, and I thought, hmm, constant. Peg. Constant peg. The whole idea of building an airfield was an overwhelming challenge. And I sketched out a little drawing of extending the runway and putting a pad there for three hangars. And I'd convinced myself that Tonopah was the right place for this project. As soon as they got hangars built, we started putting airplanes together. We had airframes and wings and all that stuff, but they weren't flyable. And they took airplanes that had been pulled out of uh, swamps and deserts and God knows where they got them. We had that much trust in our maintenance team and they didn't let us down. I mean, it was a lot of reverse engineering. Airplane's pretty much an airplane. It was so totally classified that um, it was strictly on a must-know basis. Because you'd look at these guys and they all had long hair and beards and it certainly didn't look like uh, an Air Force. It's one thing to fight another airplane, but one that you've never seen and don't know its capabilities is a whole different story. We would start them off with some very basic performance acceleration turn. We proceeded from there to one versus one engagements. You only had to watch the eyes of a fighter pilot joining up on you. He's coming in in his airplane and pretty soon you can see his face and you can see his eyeballs and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger as he's getting in closer and closer. He's never seen a Russian airplane in flight. They trained almost 6,000 American airmen on how to air fight against the MiG-17, the MiG-21. That's the end. That's an excellent video put together. All credit to Military Aviation TV. Please go and subscribe to them and follow them. They're really cool. And I don't know about you, but the culmination of what we've been talking about and then watching that video really stands the hairs up on the back of my neck. That is absolute. Just imagine the canyons of the test range. F-15s, F-14s fighting against USAF MiGs, 23s, 21s, 17s, 29s. It must have been absolutely fascinating. Wonderful piece of history. I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. Goodbye for now.